Here we go it on a YouTube in we I saw so be live now. Okay. All right, we'll be back y'all in just a second. Um check out this new tune, uh new premiere, new premiere theme song for the Griot podcast. It's called Go Grill. Give a round of applause for you, Baka. Uh, the company. Yes. 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 Hey. hey, bro. That, that was hot. Kobe, that was a good idea. Way to start season two. That was yes. a hot intro, man. Shout out to the brother. Salute, man. We appreciate that. Yes. Over here, man. I love that song, man. But, he uh, just changed wait. positions on us, man. <laughs> he did. Did he, he did. really just do that? Did. Oh man, Kofi, yo, you showing out now. Look how he did. Look how he did. Look how he did it. He's showing out now, man. That's what's up. <laughs> but uh, I am Kofi Piche. I am a writer, an actor, a co-writer, a podcaster, a publisher, a modern day griot, amongst other things. I am Sean P from the Sean P Presents podcast. Also, self-published author, educator curator, community scholar, amongst other things. And we have next, my sister. The queen. The Yo, queen. Yo, what up, wonderful people? My name is Dr. Ashley Wade. I am a pharmacist. I am mm. a black woman. I'm an author, mm. um, a book club host. I'm a, cur- a, a safe space curator, among yeah. other things, a griot. Yes, yes, okay. yes. yes. And now co-host will add that on to the yeah. yeah. Add, that, add the little spray, the little, the little yeah. razzle dazzle. Yes. And then my man, the, the guest. Be here guest. Yes, yes, and we're gonna get to him. We're gonna get to him in a second. And man, this I'm just I'm I'm excited, y'all. This is season yeah. two. Uh, we got a new look, uh, theme song. Uh, beautiful sister, uh, who's gonna be uh, on the panel with us, giving her her perspective. So man, this is gonna be a great season, and what yeah. better uh, way to start the season off with a um, new, uh, new guest, uh, yeah. and you know, in the book narrator uh, uh, um, space, right? So we're gonna Brand get all Brand. up in his business uh, yeah. here in just a second. But um, the opening of the Griot podcast, let's run that down. Y'all know mm-hmm. it, we done changed the segments a little bit, right, for season two. So opening segment will always be the same. Um, the opening segment where we will honor a teacher, a scholar, a writer, an author, revolutionary, or someone from the someone from the past or present. Sponsor segment. Well, shoot, I'm on the wrong thing. <laughs> I'm on the wrong thing. But we got the the griot, griot segment is the second segment. The third segment uh, is uh, the commercial segment. So we have a tons of things that we got going on. So we got to start highlighting the things that we got, you know what I'm saying, and the things that we are offering. So we got a small commercial segment. And then we're going to go into the guest segment. And then we're going to end. We got to always end the Griot podcast uh, with the woman mm-hmm. segment, right? We always want to honor and revere um, our women. So our beautiful uh, Griot <laughs> Uh, Dr. Ashley Wade will be giving that segment, right? So, um, well, let's get started, man. Let's get started with the opening segment. That's our brother, Sean. And y'all, please like and share the show out there. I'm going to acknowledge everybody out there. Peace. Ibaka is also in the, you see, uh, Ebola Pete. He's saying peace. Ebola Peace, that is the artist who did the theme song for us. He goes by Ibaka the Conqueror. He's out of hey man, California. Thank you very much for that, bro. V- very much for that. Thank you for your skill set. Thank you for what you offer to the community, man. We we appreciate it over here at the VI Yes, yes. All right. Is it on me, Kofi? 
Yes, sir. Let's do it. My man, one of my favorite guys to talk about. Uh, one of the one of the unknown, unsung heroes for some reason. My man Triple H, Hubert Henry Harrison, born April 27, 1883. He died December 17, 1927. He's a West Indian American writer, orator, educator, critic, race and class conscious political activist, and a radical internationalist based out of Harlem, New York. He was described by activist A. Philip Randolph as the father of the Harlem uh, radicalism and by the historian J.A. Rogers, I love J.A. Rogers, as the foremost African-American intellect of his time. Now imagine this, this man lived at a time of W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, and all the other Mount Rushmore scholars of black men. And this man just said he was the foremost African-American intellect of his time. Hmm? John G. Jackson uh, of American Atheists described him as the black Socrates. So besides reading that rundown, I want to tell y'all, bro, this man was from St. Croix, by the way. This man pretty much put himself through an education. I love the, the self-taught people, not through the halls of academia, and was able to raise himself to a level to where he was going to all these colleges debating, giving lectures and speeches on vast topics, economics, science, politics, I mean, a plethora of things. The man was also going in front of Wall Street. This man in front of Wall Street, in front of all these wealthy, behind white people, and capturing their attention, having hundreds of people in the hood and on the other side of the tracks. You know what I'm saying? So the man traveled a lot, did a lot of breaking down knowledge and information, but he was always the outcast to the ones that we know, for various reasons, always speaking his mind, uh, not playing the politics, rubbing folks the wrong way. And unfortunately, Cole, we had an episode last season on the poor righteous teachers, unfortunately, this brother's in the poor righteous teacher category uh, because he, how he was, he wasn't really getting the checks. He wasn't getting the other people funding. So he had, he had a hard life um, when it comes to finances. And, you know, unfortunately, that, that, was, that was his demise, man. But nevertheless, we're honoring Hubert Harrison. We got some phenomenal books on the brother out yes. there on Amazon. Wherever you get your books, find some of his work, man. Yes, yes. Um, shout out to uh the ancestor, um yeah. Igun Kiki Igungun. Um, man, he's a, like you said, man. Um, a lot of he's don't he don't get a lot of recognition. No, he don't get a lot of shine, man. I'm very familiar with him. I think we even honored him in the modern day Griot and Griotti book, right? Then one, then we, I think yeah. we did. I'm, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. shout out to everybody out there, man. So we now we're gonna yeah, go into the, the Griotti uh segment. Um, you know, we always this will never change. This segment will never change, and it's crazy. Sean was just saying he did a little promo on Instagram, and someone asked, What is a griot? That that's always yeah. happened. So we're gonna yeah. continue to push, you know what I'm saying, and inform people what a griot a griotti and a griotis is. So y'all, because most of y'all honestly are already serving the capacity in, in those roles, right? So we're trying to push the envelope and create the modern day griots um, of today, right? So a griot, uh, a griot is a unique West African. Um, the griots or jelly professionals encompass many roles. The griots pronounced grio have been referred to historians and storytellers, but there is, is no real word in the English language to include the function, right? So the griot can be as also a teacher. He's a diplomat. He's a genealogist. He's a historian. He's a spokesperson. He or she, excuse me, an ambassador, a music musician, a teacher, a warrior, an interpreter, a praise singer, a master of ceremony, advisor, a, no, a, a negotiator, and a mediator. Right. So the the griot serves, and the griotti serves in many roles with many capacities, right? Many important roles, right? They, again, one of the most important roles to me for them is them being a historian as preserving their history and their culture, but not only being a historian, they are also teachers, right? So they are teaching the next generation, uh, right? So the griot, though, that is what a griot and a griot, griotti is in a nutshell, right? Well, cool. So, mm-hmm. We got Mr. D. Lewis here, the audio narrator. D. Mm -hmm. Lewis, you realize that you were a griot. Yes, uh, I did once I found out what it meant. I, I sure the hell did, because I've been I've been seeing that word a lot, yeah. mostly because of you. 
and now uh Kofi. And I was like, man, what the hell is a griot? I'm like, so I looked it up and I was like, oh shit, that's pretty dope. I guess I, I would fall in that category as as like Kofi said, a whole bunch of us yes. fall into that category and just don't even know it. Yes, your wife um, as well. Your wife yeah, is yeah. a storyteller yeah. as well. Yeah, so like that, but we thought that was pretty dope because I asked her because she's the smart one out of the two of us, right? <laughs> so oh, I was like, she was you like, yo, I don't, I don't know, huh? Getting your brownie points early. That's what you do. Man, listen, <laughs> you gotta, listen, you gotta listen. <laughs> we've been rocking. We've been married twenty five years this year, man. I ain't no fool. I know that's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's that's that. That's that. That. That's, That's a blessing. Family. That's um, love, man. Yeah. But yeah, so to, to answer your crust question, uh, yeah, I, I just realized that once I looked up uh, what a see, some people pronounce it griot and some say griot. Mm -hmm. Like, is, is there a really a proper way to pronounce it or is it just kind of culture wise? How whatever it's it's, it's kind of cultural, cultural wise, because um, if um, um, you get the book, we go into the different terms. Like most of the terms that you will hear, you will hear them call them a jali or jalo um, in the Wolof language, you know, and uh, 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 by the Mandy people. But the griots are are in all of West Africa. You will see them in Senegal. You will see them in Gambia. You will see them in Ghana, Nigeria, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, so many different uh, regions in West Africa, they are. So they have their own terms, right, with their own dialogue. So it's no proper way in pronouncing it. Even the word griot and griot, it has a misnomer or some people um, doesn't even like the word because they say it's a mixture of an African and English uh, word merge, right? So, you know, some people say, well, y'all need to be pronouncing it jolly, but we go somewhere else, it's pronounced something else. So it's just up to... Um, the culture, you know, what I'm saying the culture. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato, man. Yes, come on, yes. <laughs> yep. come on bro. Yep. Stop playing with these words, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but, but, uh, <laughs> but before we get into the uh, guest segment, real quick, this is a new segment. It's called the commercial segment, right? And again, you know, we we you know a lot of times we humble ourselves, and you know. And we don't speak about a lot of the things that we got. I mean, a lot of things that we doing or a lot of things that we accomplish. But this segment is not, you know, in the future is not going to be just for us. It's going to be for anybody that wants to get any of their products or their yeah. services. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, on this segment, you know what I'm saying, where everybody else can see it, you know, just hit me or hit Dr. Way or hit Sean up and we'll be glad to promote uh your your products, your service, your company on the Gree Out podcast because again, it's not all. It's not just about us. It's about us as a totality. You know what I'm saying? Us uh, right. overall. So, right. so I'm the first. Let me do this. <laughs> Kofi always got some extra to do. He could have gone. Yeah, They're pushing buttons again. <laughs> right here, real quick. If you don't have this, it's already pinned up. Go get the modern day griot and griotes, the new generation book. Um, I like that, man. that's what's right. up. Go get that publication. Like that. It is written by me and Sean. Dr. Ashley Ray wrote the beautiful introduction in this book as well. It's a great publication. Go get it. If you want the ebook, we got it on ebook now. Come it's on, on Apple Books, it's Come on, on uh, Barnes and Nobles. Um, so go get the ebook, the modern day generation. What is right. you? As I learn, we all learn sharing information with others, deepen your own knowledge. This is my book. This is a phrase that I live by. As I learn, we all learn the same thing as our ancestor did. Each one teach one. I just flipped it as I learn, we all learn, and we demonstrate that quite well over here too on the Gree Out podcast. Yes, we do. The beautiful lessons about Kimoyo. This is another publication by me. Yes. If you are, uh, this book is written for the neophytes, those who want to understand African culture, tradition, and language. This is a great uh, reference point for you. Awesome cover. Mandingo love, Theory, love The yeah, Castration of Africans and the Sex Craze Conceptualization, also another book written um, by me. Again, we are all authors on this panel, right? Mm -hmm. Africa's Hair, Doing Before and After Slavery mm -hmm. is another book mm -hmm. uh, written by me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Throw in this real quick, the coloring book, my spirit master's coloring book. This is an education coloring book for kids please. between the ages of six. Uh, we're age, age five and 12. All right, this is Sean. What's your kick publication? Uh, a phenomenal publication. Go get my brother's work. Make a black man blush. 
Yeah, butterfly. <laughs> butter, <laughs> other, man, man, blood, cool. The butterfly effect is another one of my brother's publications. The anatomy of a book, which you know is my favorite publication out of all of his publications. Mine too, Co. Going too. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Yes, I'm telling you. Here is the five laws of leadership. Wow. Another great book. I, I'll tell you, this is another great book as well. It's not, it ain't, the, the other book is my favorite, but this come in as number two. You know, I'm all about leadership. This is his last book, Expanding Your Vision, um, right here. And let's get into my sister work. My sister is also a, yeah. a, a, yeah. It's a journey, a holistic journey yeah. for discovering self, Dr. Ashley Wade. But she just had a whole event. Um, yes, and uh, real quick before we get into the uh, uh, guest segment, can you kind of talk about how that turned out? Because they you have modules that you write inside the book, right? You know, what I'm saying the discovering yourself, which is dope, by the way. Can you you know brief us a little uh, quickly on how that event turned out this weekend? First of all, thank you for asking, and I appreciate y'all support. You know, so I'm out here in Dallas, Texas, curating unique learning experiences. And so um, I wrote my book in 2021 and I've been sitting on this idea of like a sit down. Let's all sit down and write in my book. So it's a book and a journal. So it's a safe space for people. And so I had my first journaling event yesterday. It went so well. I'm still receiving feedback from it, but I think everybody received the message of, uh, first of all, the fact that we can create safe spaces for each other. There got my brother in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. but I great community leaders to join in with me. Uh, our homegirl, Drea the Sunflower Poet. Y'all, we love Drea the Sunflower Poet. I have the Drea, Drea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love her. And she brought us up some two fire pieces at the end. My homegirl, Alicia, she's a comedic yoga instructor. And she had us actually moving. So I'm actually getting the content uh, uh, from my from my photographer for that. So we were all in there moving. And then I have a homegirl. She's a healer social worker. Um, her name is Nia Ross. So I just like to demonstrate community, unity with Black women. Um, and so we spent two hours walking through each module. There's five. We journaled. We talked. And I like to have interactive sessions. So people partnered up. They had conversations. Um, my homegirl Nia makes this fire-ass herbal lemonade. And so we partook in that. It was just an amazing time. And so, again, thank you guys for supporting. Thank you, Kofi and Sean, for really having my back and, and really you know, support me on the back end. Uh, but on the front end, that's where we, we're moving to is creating unique learning experiences because we know what, what Kofi said, as I learn, we all learn. So we have we to learn. create and curate spaces for each other to learn. Yes. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. I'm glad everything turned out well. What, 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 what that coffee mug said? What, what that coffee mug was? Yeah. Ooh, the light, the image and likeness. <laughs> you better preach it. She, she, she had an NIL deal. <laughs> <laughs> just like this. Yes, yes. Man, I don't know how I'm going to follow none of that shit, yo. Y'all done ran the gambit, yo. Nah. <laughs> like, man. for real. Don't <laughs> yo, do that's that. mad dope. I think it's mad dope what all y'all are doing. And y'all all got your own little kind of lane. And it looks like y'all all merged together. And yeah, like yo, that's mad dope. But y'all done ran the gambit, man. Now, how are we going to talk about this now, man? No, don't do that, brother. Don't do that. And I'm dead ass about to click up out of here, man. I'm like, yo, man, yo, we was talking earlier. We was talking before the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How people think, you know, see, that's why that's why motherfuckers think y'all serious all the time. Look what y'all doing. Y'all doing real big stuff. Real big stuff, by the way. As, as you as well. Though. As you um, as well. As you yeah, as well. Yeah, see, yeah, right. see, nah. Yes, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't. I'm about to straighten my shit up. Nah. <laughs> So let, let's get into it, man. So let's get into the game. Let me, let me right. Get, so, let me, I'm gonna get straight now. Let me straighten the hat out. And... So, people that don't know uh, who you is, brother D. Lewis, can you briefly introduce yourself um, real quick before we get into this discussion? For people who may not know you, yeah, for sure. I'm um, I'm D. Lewis, the narrator. Um, I, I got into voice acting a couple years back, maybe about three years ago. Um, and that's that's what I do. That's what I, I fell in love with it. And so that's what I do. I, I touch all genres of black cultural books. So um, that's that's normally what I focus on. And so it's whether I mean, we, we can be talking romance, we can talk erotica, like whatever the genre is, like I'm I'm involved in trying to be a part of all of them because it's, it's all part of the black experience and we need way more representation of us. 
doing our stuff. You yes. know what I mean? So that's that's kind of who I am, what I do right now. Yes, hey, yes. Go and go ahead. No, I wanted to say we did the sip the read episode, uh I think episode seven. We talk we talk mostly about black love and black relationships. And this show is all about the black community and, and black things like that. And sometimes it get real scholarly and all that, but black love is the forefront of all of that. Mm -hmm. Man got 20 years, 25 years of marriage. Like that's the forefront of all of this. So you're doing what you're doing with the black romance and erotica and urban fiction, all the thing y'all doing. That's the utmost importance, man. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we go, I'm gonna talk later on. Like, I wanna ask you something that Who? you later on, man. We're gonna get into right. it because it's it was it? like you bro, I know what it is. I he know probably is. know what it is. And I'm and, and and I saw it through. I saw I saw I saw it through, right? <clears throat> because anytime we on here, we always do our homework when we bring it in, guys. I got via introduced to you via through sipped and read some months back, right? <clears throat> and Sean shout out to the sisters, man. Yeah, shout Blood out them. to Rita and Nicky, man. Shout out to them. And um, so you know, um, when I and and so I started seeing things. I said, man, I need to try to get this brother, man. We need to try to get him on uh, season two, episode one. That's when I reached out to you. So I knew of you and some of the things, and then even your wife. I I, I know your wife via uh, Sean, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I said I I got, I've been saying I need to get the sister publications, right? I need to get some of her publications, right, to support because that's what we do. We support so. I think I, I said, damn, I got the wrong. I support it. Now, I ain't going to say I support it, but I said, I think I started off with the wrong book first. I should have started off. <laughs> you know I should have started out with the know. other book. But, uh, we, and we going to talk about that because. You know which one he started out with, man. Don't tell me. Don't I, Let me I guess which one he started out with. You know I told him to get the M&M Chronicles. The M &M That's the safe one for a man to start out with. <laughs> he went, he went, he went to the dark side of light. I went to the dark side of light. I knew it. I knew that nigga went to the dark side of light. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk <laughs> about it, G. All right, you don't get there. I, I commend you. I commend you. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I told you what to get. I told you what to get. See, higher headed. He ain't listening yet. <laughs> but we're gonna get into it, man. But let's start out with my, my first question for you, D. Lewis, is how did you approach voicing different characters in the in the in the books to give them uh a distinct personality? And and I know just by reading the dark side of light, each one of those characters had their own different personalities, right? And you you did a, a superb job. Um, with each one of those, uh, each one of those characters, right? I each one of those characters, I did not. You didn't. You did. You nailed it so well that I know. Okay, well, this is not D. Lewis just reading something. I actually, you actually painted the picture, and narrated so perfectly that each one. And that was the problem for me with certain things I, I was reading. That, I was actually <laughs> seeing it because, damn, you was telling it like it was, and it made it so vivid where I can just actually see it. So, but again, how? How did how how did you approach voicing those different characters in the book and to give them those distinctive personalities? Um, damn, that's a good question because that like normally y'all would approach it. I, I got a kind of a system that you know I pull from life experiences most of the time. Um, either I've been the character, I know the character, you know what I mean. So I I draw a lot of you know the way I approach you know projects is just. You know, where where have I been in life? Mm -hmm. And I draw from all of that because I've, I've either seen or know or heard of all of these characters before, just an everyday life experience. Um, this one was completely different, though. Um, I wasn't. Let me back up now. I'm typically involved in on, on some level in most of AA's projects, you know, whether she's bouncing ideas off of me. Or, you know, I may do a first pass edit before it goes out for editing. Just in some capacity, I'm involved in a project so I know about the book. Um, this one was different. I, I did not read this book at all. Um, <laughs> I didn't read it at all uh, when it first dropped because it was just like, yo, it's, this probably ain't my bag. You know, I like, I don't, you know what I mean? And so I was relieved when she was like, no, nah, I'm going to try to get somebody else to narrate this. I was like, whoo, shit. All right, cool. We straight. Um, 
But time went on and she uh, she could not find what she was looking for. And I said, well, all right, man, let me just I'm going to grab it. Read a couple of chapters and, and go into the booth and see what happened. Um, so it was I, I approached it blind like because I, I didn't know I knew kind of the gist of the book, but I didn't know what was in the book. <clears throat> And so it just that's that's kind of how it started. I approached it blind, which I'm I'm kind of grateful I did because I didn't have a preconceived notion of what the character was or how the character should sound. Um, I just went down there and just kind of what naturally came out is kind of what you guys got. Um, sure. So it was it was a completely different experience most of the time because when I read for myself, um, and I've always been like this, I'll, I'll read, but I don't just read you know i put i've always put voices to stuff um and tried to to bring it to life for me to make it interesting like i try to put myself in the scene or whatever is happening you know what i mean so um that's how i approach my narration okay. anyways so it, it's just a natural reflection of the way i read for myself personally because that's what i like so i i try to to grab the book and and try to bring the characters to life so that it enhances the reading experience for, you know, for the listeners, for those who like to enjoy the audio books. Most definitely, you did an excellent job because um, I just started, like he mentions us, us our, our good sister Sarita and Nikki, right? Um, after that episode about three, four months ago, I, I'm a physical reader. So I, I got, I'm talking about, man, I got walls full of books, right? And and I love reading physical books. Not saying I've never did an audio book, but my entire um, time of reading books, I became an avid reader in 2013. So I've been reading books since 2013 every day. And out of those from 2013 to right, uh, uh, um, till that episode, I might have listened to maybe two, three audio books the entire time. And one, and two, I'll be honest, really never finished them, right? Because I, I love a physical read. But after, um, you know, me and Sean talking a lot, and then after that episode, and him and Sean and him, and, uh, you know, talking about the upsides of the audio books, I got submerged into the audio books. So in the last four months, I probably done did about 10 or 11 audio books. I'm a part of a book That's club. A book club right now with uh Sarita and Nikki, right? We reading uh Jonah Vascar's all five of her books, and then we're coming back and discussing. We even had Jonah Vascar on the last episode. Um, but due to some technical difficulties out there, we uh streamed it live when we kind of go back to put the information in and save it for everybody else to watch it later on in the archives. Oh, something happened where it, it got deleted, but um, but anyway. Just that I've just I just grown fun of audiobooks, which it has helped me in my process along the way. Like now, if I'm interviewing somebody with a book, now I can audio the book, then go back, and then I can do um uh, my annotations in the books. And it, it's easier for me to read through the book. For me, it's easy to read the book quicker now because I don't listen to the audio and do my annotations where I where I, you know, where I want to do, but audio do the annotation. But I just want to say, man, you did a superb job. Um with just the one publications that that I read, and I'm saying that because I'm putting you up there um, with uh, what's what's the brother name, Jacoby? Like Jacoby. <laughs> I'm like I'm I'm serious, uh, and the yeah. reason why I'm saying that you narrated in a way where we able to envision exactly what you're saying because I, you know, with me just getting into it, I like I said, I don't you know done listen to 10, 11 audio books, and some of the audio books, I'll be honest. As there, uh, as I'm trying to get engaged, I'm not envisioning the things playing out in real time in my head like a movie, right? So I'm saying that because you did a superb job, man. I appreciate chance. No, I appreciate the compliment. That, that's a hell of a compliment right there, too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. So that's that's kind of the idea, you know, kind of where I, that's that's the experience I want the listeners to have. So that's, 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 I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So before I say my, my question, I want to let the chat know, anybody watching this in the future, for those that don't know you and your wife, Miss A.A. Lewis, man, 
you you guys are an amazing uh, one two punch in the space because so many times uh, we talk about support off the camera. All of us talk about support and your spouse's support and family member support. Sometimes, a lot of times, that's not always what you would like it to be every time. But to see a wife write so prolifically and then have her husband do all the audio narration, that is like, I don't know anybody else. I'm not saying there is nobody else, but I don't personally know anybody else in the space where the husband and wife is just one, two punching like that. That's that's crazy to me. I, I love y'all for that. You know. Yeah, I appreciate mm -hmm. that. I appreciate that. It wasn't, it really wasn't nothing that was planned like this. We really didn't plan it like that. It's just kind of the way things, the way life took us kind of at that time. And it's mostly the way life took me. Um, I don't know if somebody's going to ask the question of how I got into it, um, but it, it kind of goes into that. So I'm going to wait for that question if somebody want to go, if somebody got something else they need to know, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can handle that. But yeah, that, that yeah. wasn't planned. But um, I love that, though, that we're able to kind of yeah. work in the same area of life and it just it makes it easier for us to have time spent together communication and all that because we've got that's one more thing that we have in common you know yeah. so that's strong that's and and, and I've, I've always we've always both always supported each other and whatever it is we wanted to do like we we made it a point to all right this is what you want to do let's go ahead and do it um and so that we just we've always played off each other and, and our, our energy like that. So um, it, it's, it doesn't surprise me that I ended up moving into one of her spaces along with her in, in the creative, because I, I wasn't always that for sure. And, and once again, keeping the show like tight, but like, I want to say this for those that don't know, uh, I want to get into narration myself, right? For a long time, years want to get into narration. As a narrator, it could be hard to get hired for a job to narrate somebody's work. So with your wife being the author, it's a shoe in for the job, right? And then for the author, as you said earlier, it could be hard to find somebody to do narration. So on both yeah. sides of the spectrum, yeah. it could be hard to find somebody or get hired by somebody. And y'all eliminating both of those in one shot, business wise, that's crazy. Right. And it, it ain't always easy now, cause she, well, I tell you what, man, like she's my toughest toughest customer always but she's you know she knows me my abilities and she's like yo uh, you could do better than that bro that i, like I want you to say different I like, like i'm like and i'm looking like at her like man i'll, I'll turn all this shit over because i thought <laughs> I, I thought it was dope but nah nah she <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that the first one i did for her was the the eminem chronicles i, I love that book I love that book. That's, that's the one that I got introduced to you. And uh, Eminem Chronicles was amazing. Anybody out there listening, check out the Eminem Chronicles. You're going to love it. You did a phenomenal job. Both of y'all did a phenomenal job with that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So to my question, so in my opinion, all of us get inspiration or we get we get motivated by seeing somebody do something or perform something. We say, you know what? I can do something like that. Who was that person for you when it comes to audio narration? Who did you like look forward to or get inspired by or who are some people that's like man i, I want to do that right there who, who I, might as, I might as well get into the story then it was nobody it was really nobody um like kofi i was a physical book guy right so i like to pick up a book and turn the pages um i got i like to say lovingly bullied into audio narration you know what i mean so the way the, the the story goes like this. So AA was dropping the book, The Last Letter. Um, and she, you, she was doing video trailers and stuff like that. And she said, yo, I need your help on this trailer. And I'm thinking, okay, well, she just want me to put the video stuff together because I had that software from our podcast and stuff. So I, I was editing all that stuff. So I had the stuff. And uh, she says, no, nah, I need your voice. And I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. Like, what's, what is you talking about? Yo, we not doing that. Don't nobody want to hear me. This shit going to be whack. You, don't, you ain't going to like it. So why be even wasting our time? Every excuse I can come over. Anyway, I did it. She made me do it. And that was the end of it. But about a week or so later, another good friend of ours, author Jay Asmara, shout out to, to you, Jay. Um, she ended up calling her 
and she had her own speakerphone. It was like, yo, is that D's voice on your trailer? My wife was like, yeah, girl, that's him. And she goes, yo, I need him to narrate my audio book. And I was like, oh, hell no, you don't. I'm like, I, I don't know nothing about that. You're really not going to like it. Like, nah, because when you hear your voice for the first two times, you really don't like it. I you know what it. I mean? Like, you really don't like it. And anyway, that's most people. That's most people. Mm. a few months passed and I was going to school at the time. So the semester ended. Um, and I was like, man, what am I going to do with my time? And AA goes, well, you could start that audio book for Jay. And I'm like, oh, my God, y'all didn't drop that shit. So speed up the story a little bit. I, I got down in it because I had all the equipment to do it. I just didn't know where to start. So I did, did a little bit of research and I get into I get into it and it's feeling a little funny. But by chapter three, I'm starting to settle. I'm like, yo, this is this is all right. And uh, by chapter seven, I was like, yo, this shit is dope. I think I could do this like. I could let me I might have to try doing something like this. Um, and that's that's kind of how it went. Um, I finished that book and as a as a way to probably prove my wife wrong, I set up a ACX account and I auditioned for something and uh I got the I got the shit and I was like, oh my God. I'm like, yo, this shit is gonna happen. I'm like, all right. Because at that time I was I was loving it. I, I really wanted to pursue it at that time. So my energy was in the right space. I was in the right place and time as far as my life goes. I had just left corporate America, corporate management, and I was like, I, I really don't want to go back there. And so I'm at this pace in my life where I'm trying to find out what I like to do. You know, after so many years of focusing, you know, in one direction, it's kind of we have a habit to maybe lose ourselves a little bit. Um, so I was really in the rediscovery portion of my life. And uh, it it just, you know, the universe aligned, you know, and my energy was there to receive it. And, and it's kind of where I got started with all this. So um, I just kept going at it and uh, kept getting better and kept doing more books. So, yeah, shout out, you know, shout so, out. It, 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 so to answer your question, I, I didn't know much about audio books at all other than white people listen to them. Right. Like because I didn't know anybody. Who really listened to audiobooks little did i know aa had listened to some audiobooks before so she knew some people but like we don't talk about that kind of stuff in in our everyday interactions right yeah this is good um, because this is, before the sit and read show talking to different friends of mine that are avid readers about audiobooks it's probably a very low percentile of folks that i know personally even get down with that yeah and even myself i'm more newer too. I ain't been doing it for a long time. I've been a good year or two, you know, speeding up on it. But like most folks around me, not really necessarily in that space. So, and why today's show is important to get but, people more aggressive. And I, and I credit that to like we were we we've always have a tendency to be excluded from certain spaces, right? So, while you know other cultures know about voice acting and and all this other stuff, right? We was really never exposed to, to that kind of stuff. At least I wasn't. And let me speak for myself growing up. Um, yeah, we had access to books, but we like we never were like voice acting was not a career choice. Right. We didn't even know what the heck that was. Now, although we've been watching it our whole lives. Right. We never yeah. knew what it was. Come and it was bro. always a space where on, others bro. were able to come in and do what they wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. So I think now is a time where a lot of us in our culture is starting to get exposed, you know, from people like Jacoby, yes. you know, and Wesley and yes. those guys who have been in the cool. game for a long and, and yo, shout out to them because they are at yes. the, yo, they are at the top of their game, man. And they, they going the big. And so mm -hmm. today I do get encouragement from those guys because yes. I can look at them and say, yo, that's where I'm going yes. and it can happen. There's people already in that space that look like me yeah. you yeah. know what i mean so yeah. i i use i use their success as encouragement for me today to keep pushing forward and keep getting better and when i step into the booth that's that's kind of what i'm trying to do because a, a part of my homework for the show today besides hearing your specific voice uh, i've been months 
And once again, I want to do it too. I've been following different black audio narrators on Instagram and stuff like that. I just sent Kofi and Dr. Wade all kind of videos in the inbox. They're probably like, what's Sean doing? But you seeing these black narrators, you seeing them practice adjusting their voice and what they do in the prep before they go press that live button on the mic. What they're doing is a skill set. It's like being an athlete. Yeah. Before the game, you do certain things for the game, they're showing you what they do to record their things. And like you're saying, this is a whole profession. These folks are making money just being at home with their home set up and they're living their life doing what they love to do on that mic. Like why not why wouldn't we be in that space? Right. Wouldn't we be over there? You know what I'm saying? For for me, that's what it's all about is look, I'm trying to take back control over me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to have to depend on somebody else and their system, you know, for me to to live the way I want to live. You know what I mean? So it's about finding something you love to do Mm -hmm. and going after that. You know what I mean? It's like you you can't you literally cannot fail Mm. if your energy is in the right place. If you feel emotionally about it, if you've seen it in your mind, you cannot fail. That's just that's universal law. So I always keep that in mind as well. Yeah, there's bumps along the way and you're going to have times where you feel discouraged. But that's all part of the process. You know what I mean? So although I, I look at, yeah, this is where I want to be. I want to be with them Jacobis and the Wesleys and, and all them other guys, right? But I I need to keep myself centered as well because I'll miss the process. It's about getting there as well. So staying in a moment and just being is kind of where, you know, I, I find a lot of joy in that because I'm doing what I love to do. So it says, it's, you know what I mean? So it's, it, we can't fail when you, and it's not no matter what, what you want to do out there, man, if you got an idea in your mind and you've seen it and you can feel it, man, you better go do it because you, you're letting opportunities pass you by, yep. you know, so we can't blame our unhappiness on anybody else but ourselves that's, at that that's, point. That's a fact, Jack. You know that's, what I mean? that's a fact. And I'm, I'm doing the same thing this year. I'm, <clears throat> I'm stepping out on a ledge. I'm putting all my bed, my, uh, what is eggs in one basket, bro? And I'm stepping out there, bro. And um, this is my last year, man, depending on somebody else, man. I'm already doing what I'm supposed to be doing anywhere at my home, but I want a brick and mortar, and I don't want to have to depend on them at all, period. So I'm stepping out on faith, man, and and I'm letting them folks have it and taking my life back and doing what I enjoy doing, man. So I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about for me. That's at, at this point in my life, man. That's that's where I'm at, and I I don't want to go back. You know what I mean? So. And listen, D. Lewis. Let me say this. I'm a stubborn girl, and I I like my hardback books because I like to write. I, I'm be heavy on the annotations. But now, after like listening to you and seeing your mindset and your passion not for your specific gift, but to do what you want to do and have that freedom. I'm going to tap into your work. What you said, Sean, that was Eminem. What's the Eminem Chronicles? Well, 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 hold on. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm going to put you up on it. He said, hello, hello, hello. We, we, uh, uh, Us being the brothers, the Eminem Chronicles was perfect. But for you being the lady, uh-huh. there might be something else in the catalog that she might be able to advise you that might be more... More your book. You know okay, well, listen, I'm gonna take a recommendation because now I'm open to it. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been hard. Yeah, so yeah, because Sean know me and Sean, would. you know, in private all the time. He always sending me audio, and I'm like, okay, I get it, I appreciate it, but I'm not gonna tap into it for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? I'm stubborn like that. But even just now, since like knowing you, hearing your voice, I'm like, dang, he probably fire on the mic. You know what I'm saying? So let me Thank tap you. in Thank and. You. and, and Sometimes that is what makes us feel comfortable is when we know the person, see the person yeah. like, okay, now let me go see what work they got going on. So now I'm inspired, inspired and I just want to make sure that I let you know that even just being on this show, you being here inspired me, just listening to your intellect, listening wow. to how you wow. kind of tapped into yeah. your self-discovery journey. That's something that we honor here. The yes, journey, the process, unfolding. So my question to you is, you know, that talent of oration that's a huge gift because everybody can't do that <laughs> everybody can't do that to me it's a gift and we honor that part of everybody's journey is when you realize oh i have a gift so tell us about uh when you realize that dang i kind of have a gift and then the progression of your growth within that 
Okay, yeah. Um, I, I first realized it after I was forced to do this audio book for that for that good friend of author of ours. Oh, let me back up. You said you wanted a recommendation. I I, I would recommend to you uh the last letter um by A. A. Lewis is a is a good one for you. Um it, that's a duo narration. You'll get myself and A. A. Um but the dark side of light is uh that's my favorite project to date. And and we can get in and I'll get into why answering your question that as far as the progression of um, me as a narrator, that would be a great one for you as well. Okay, locked in. Um, yeah, you 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 would definitely you would like you would like I I I like it. It would just I I like stories. So the story is what kept me listening to it. Story it was just was crazy like, though. It was just right. So and in, in the plots and 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 the things that transpired and even some of the things that I thought about the main character, it it actually was so. I think you would definitely like it. I just don't like even even as me as a heterosexual man, I'd never been as a uh, as me being in school. I was having sex when I was in high school. I was having sex when I was in junior high. I started early having sex, but I'd never been uh, the type of person even amongst my friends. Tell my friends uh, the sexual events that happens in my bed or who I'm having sex with and uh, are even going into details with. So even if it was something else, I still have, even with the Jonah Vass Vassar, uh, Dr. Uh, not Dr. Wade, but um, uh, Sarita and Nikki will tell you why I hit them up like, dang, they having orgies in this thing here, you know, and even listening to some of those things, it makes me feel uncomfortable because I just never been the type of person or what they say, kiss and tell. So it, it so it ain't just that Pacific story and what took place in that Pacific story. It could have been another story with a heterosexual man, a heterosexual woman, and I still would have feel uncomfortable like I do with the Jonah Vascar uh series too. It, I, I don't know, it's just me and talking about sex or listening to someone have sex or their sexual escapades. It, I just feel uncomfortable with. And, and that's cool because everything ain't for everybody. And that's, that's oh, another man. thing we need to understand right, right. is that just because somebody doesn't like a particular thing that you've done or, you know, some of your work doesn't mean that, you know, you need to take that so personally that you're ready to fight or that you're ready to give up on yeah. your dreams. I mean, everything just ain't for everybody. We all have our preferences. So, yo, but it's I, good. But I it's, can it's, respect that. Yeah, I but it was good. That. But it was good. That's what I'm saying. It was good. Yeah. I hit Sean up about it, and then I listened to it all the way through because the storytelling was oh, an excellent was storytelling, right? It made me want to know what, what, okay, what's going to happen next? Okay, what's going to happen to his best friend now that he, or I'm wondering why, you know, what, how, how did he get in here? You know what I'm saying? How did he get in prison? Okay, how did he afford this, the procedures that he had before? So, you know, so it kept me asking questions. And I, as I begin to ask questions, I get more interested in the story. And then I say, and then she'll, then you will come along with, oh, now I know why. So it was an excellent, you know, it was an excellent story because after I bought the audio, I bought the book. So I, I bought the audio and now I purchased the book. So I have the yeah, book. Yeah. I was hoping for it would have been here by the time, but mm -hmm. you know, we've been having this ice and snow and stuff like that. Oh, so crazy. Mail been behind, so I won't get my yeah. copy until tomorrow. All right, hey, so, dude. yo, hold on, hold on. Look, wait, hold hey, on, dude. hold on to that, Sean. I, I need to answer the, the good doctor's question yeah. here. I want to yeah, answer yeah, the good cool. doctor's question, so I don't want to, nah, I, I, I don't need to be in trouble with nobody. Um, Thank you. <laughs> because to me, there's a difference in realizing there's something that you can do and when you realize that it's actually a gift, you know what I'm saying? We can do so many different things, but yeah. when did you realize like, dang, this is special to me. Like only I can do it like this and this is my lane and let me work on that. Let me build upon that because this is really something that not only am I passionate about, but it's special to me. I felt that way probably after the, the second book I did, um, like the, it was just, it was, it felt so natural. You know, it wasn't me just seeing anymore, right? Seeing how, you know, kind of how it was or kind of how I was, how I would do. Um, there just came a point where I just, I, I felt it, you know, kind of 
within my soul like this is natural this is what i'm supposed to be doing right now um and it's a matter of just catching that feeling and listening to it because i've 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 had that feeling before right and depending on where we all are in our lives sometimes we we neglect it we don't listen to it and we don't follow that um and a, and a lot of a lot of what helped me too is i i changed up my reading material as well so i got you know, into reading a lot more in spiritual books, trying to get more in touch with my inner self and, and my own power and what I'm capable of doing. And so um, it, it was a combination of all those things. But when I felt it, I just knew like, yo, I'm dope as fuck at this. Period. I'm going to keep doing it. Right. And it, it's not a matter of we was talking about being humble earlier, you know, a little bit about humility and it's not a matter of being um, braggadocious or anything like that. I think sometimes we need to change our definitions of how we've been taught to view certain words, because humility to me growing up always meant you have to lower yourself, mm -hmm. right? When you are around other people, mm -hmm. right? So that you don't offend them or you don't rub them the wrong way or whatever the case may be. And uh, I, I don't, my definition is different today. Like I'm, I'm very comfortable in saying I'm dope as fuck <laughs> because I know I am right. I'm just waiting for the rest of the world to catch up sometimes. Right. That's what all greatness does. There's nobody that's great at anything that's ever oh, waited man. for somebody else to tell oh, them how man. great they were. Right? Right? So I know I'm dope as fuck. The rest of the world just needs to catch up. Right. But that doesn't mean I need to downplay who right. I am being humble to me today is me being grateful and me being appreciative for the things I have and for the things I'm able to do. That's where the humility comes in. It's not about me saying, oh, well, no, I think I'm all right. But, you know, no, I'm dope as fuck. Thank you very much. Right. And I appreciate all of that. And, you know, it's, it's just a matter of being showing gratitude, being willing to help the next person who's thinking about doing something similar to what you're doing. Right. That's how you that's how you show humility. In my opinion, that's just my own definition, the way I, I, I view it today. I love um, it. But yeah, I, I, I knew it was that when I felt it. I just, something within me said, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And this is what I want to do. That's an excellent and, I, and, and that's why I kept doing it. And I feel you, you made an excellent point there. You said, I started paying attention to it. I started to acknowledge that this is something special. And to me, that's a, that's a universal message because, you yeah. know, I put a lot of people who, uh, who run circles around their purpose. Is it, is it not? I think it is. I'm not sure. And they just run circles and circles around it without actually confirming or receiving that confirmation and pay attention that like, okay, yeah, this is it. Let me take hold of it and grow within it instead of wanting to do 50 things to try to see if one of the 50 is actually going to be it. You see what I'm saying? Right. So I love the fact that you were like, okay, I realized it. I got comfortable in it. Then I started to explore it and then I got better at it. And to me, that's that's a whole message. Shout out to you for really uh, you. being true to yourself and acknowledging that you dope as fuck. Because then, again, people like to downplay, but that was then. This is now. So I like that we're ushering right. this new dialect about self and how important it is to really honor yourself and then pop your shit on top of that. Yeah, you, you have to, because if, if you're not going to acknowledge it, you can't expect someone else. Thank you so much. Um, but the, the second part of your question, as far as my progression, um, it's like I'm so much more comfortable. And I, I noticed I'm going I'm to I'm I'm let y'all in on the secret, that dark side of light, the dark side of light. Um, me doing that project. Let me know that, yo, there's nowhere I can't go with this because it was such a different project yo it was not me at all you know what i mean it, this project stretched me so much creatively um that it was just it was weird and i felt the, i felt some kind of way reading this stuff too kofi so don't <laughs> yo, i felt the kind of way reading this shit right um but that's when i had to really dig in and say yo this is this is the creative process trust yeah. it do what you do but when I first started reading and I took it up to my wife and I played some back for her, she started crying. And I was like, damn, man, all you had to say was, yo, I don't like it. Right. Like you ain't had to just 
because she, you know, remember she's upset because she couldn't find a narrator. So I was like, I'm gonna try to help out. And I, I take it up, I start playing, and she started crying. I'm like, oh shit, now I gotta deal with this all night. I'm like, how am I gonna get out of this one? But it was she she loved it. And I was like, oh shit, I, I nailed it. She was like, dude, you nailed it. Just can you carry that? And I was like, I don't know. We're gonna see. And I was and I was able to actually carry those characters for an entire project, which was very exhausting mentally and physically, as far as my voice and everything, because when you're doing the uh you know you're doing feminine style voices as a man it, it really strains your voice a lot um so it was just yeah it was it was a long project as far as making myself mentally prepared and just pushing through it but it was worth it in the end because that's that is my my favorite project to date um not only because the materials dope and it's my wife but it stretched me and grew me so much I think as a narrator, because I was able to pull that project off that, you know, I, I feel at this point, there's probably not a whole lot out there that I couldn't pull off and I couldn't do so. And that's, you know, it's not to say that in the future, I'll probably go and end up, I would like to anyway, maybe get into some classes and stuff like that to get some more refinement in my game. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I like where I'm at right now. Okay, man. Um, before I ask the next question, I like that's something I need to work on um, myself. Like what you and Doctor Wade saying, you know, popping your SHIT right. Um, I'm talented and, and gifted in a lot of things. Like I was at the barber shop real quick, and this weekend, and one of the barbers, we cool, we be having. I don't say too much, but. Every now and then they'll ask me uh, something. They want to know Kofi's perspective on certain things. Sometimes I ruffle feathers. So a lot of times I just try to be quiet and don't engage in conversations. Don't ask me nothing because we can, I'll go into something where it may offend somebody or, or or whatever the case. So, But he asked me, Kofi, man, how you doing, bro? And for me, my business, man, has tripled so far. My business that tripled. So I'm I'm like super blessed. Like, and I got so much thing coming for 2024 and a new store coming in 2024. So I didn't want to pop my SHIT, right? So I told the brother, I ain't got nothing, ain't nothing, man. I, I don't know. I don't know. So the brother was like, You don't know. I know you got something going on, brother. If you I said, Well, I'm blessed. He went, he and he basically said what y'all said. Man, pop your SHIT, bro. If you got blessings, bro, let us know you got these blessings, man. What you got? So bro, then I started think, running think about down. it like this. Um, no, go ahead and finish. I don't want to cut you off. No, I, but you know, it, it, I, I'm working on it because I like yeah. I ain't trying to be the the man. I ain't trying, you know, I'll, I'll make somebody feel small and I feel big. You know what I'm saying? So it just always I just always say, well, I can just pat myself on the back. I ain't got to say too much or nothing. People can see if they say, if they don't, it's cool. I'll just pat myself on the back. I'm not going to get mad if nobody acknowledged me for this, that, and the third. And they'll tell you, I always say, I don't care nothing about being a man or being recognized for certain things. I know I, I can do certain things and I can do certain things well and good. And long as it's benefiting me and my family, I'm straight. I'm not worried about anybody else's opinion, but I don't be want to hurt anybody else's feeling by letting them know all of the blessings or the things that I'm blessed with that I can do, you know what I'm saying, at a high level, right? So I appreciate yeah. you and Dr. Wade for, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, throwing that in, you know what I'm saying, about, you know, reflecting on your inner self. It's nothing wrong with, with popping your SHIT, especially when you know you're talented in these different fields <clears throat> and you're in your different lane and even your definition of humility right even though i have a problem with that word i still say i'm not going to use that word and i'm going to be aggressive with the things i still never do it but i appreciate both of you for, um, I, mean, for I i when i when i do my yeah. thing when i when i say you know to to anybody or uh, uh, anything i say i'm still always talking to myself as well right so think about it as the way I see it anyway is like yo i'm reaffirming to myself yeah that's the most that this is that this is what that's i am cool. Right. Yeah, this is what I do. Yeah, um, words okay. carry so much power. Yes. You know, and, and yeah. just because I'm sitting here speaking to you guys about certain topics, 
I'm still hearing this. I'm still talking yeah. to myself. Yeah. Right. So I'm I'm just reaffirming in myself that yo, I, I does this shit like this. Come on, I man. does this. Um <laughs> But but no, I, I think me and Kofi, our personalities are probably built more alike than what I may be showing right here. I'm I'm really not a talker. I'm more of an introvert. Um, I'm I'm laid back mostly to myself. I don't, you know what I mean. Um, but I had to learn to. It's part of my own growth, I guess, as an individual. That you know, if I want to accomplish certain things, sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone. And, yeah. and right now I'm way out of my fucking comfort zone. Trust me on this. Like you can, you can ask my wife. I'm I'm so far out of my comfort zone. I'm trying to get better at different things like social media because, like I say, I'm like, yeah, I don't, you know what I mean. But again, if I say this is what I want to do, I have to get I have to get in alignment with what I want to do. And and right now, you know, part of that is okay. I have to put myself out there. So people can know who I am right yeah. I have to you know do things like social media is God right now right and a lot of ways far as mm. you know getting material about you know people posting content all that stuff like I just don't I'm not comfortable I'm not natural with that but that's again the universe telling me yo you got to get uncomfortable so you can got get you. comfortable got you you see what I mean? I, so, yeah. Um, like, I think this may be like what only my second interview that I've ever done. Like, because I I don't solicit at all. Like, I don't go out asking nobody. And that's see, think look at what you just said, Sean. That's crazy, man. It is crazy. Why you ain't? Again, you know me and you for the past again. year. I'm like, man, what's right. on the show? I want you on the show again. But see that that's part of me doing this. Like, uh. I still want you on the uh, show. Stand the but, public, I want you on the show. Oh, anytime. I ain't told you that, but it's show. it's just part of me trying to grow as an individual, uh, personally, as as well yeah. as you know, in the craft of uh, um, audio book well, narration, and voice acting. I'm gonna take like ten seconds, right? Look how crazy society and how backward society is, which is probably why certain guys feel like what y'all just expressed, right? If Dion Sanders, see, I've been winning since I was eight years old. I've been winning. Everybody get mad at that, but he did. If Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant, I've been winning since high school. Everybody get mad at that, but he did. If Mike Tyson say, I'm the greatest, I'm the best ever, nobody like that. Floyd Mayweather, he do his whole career, not even lose on PlayStation. Everybody get mad at that. But if you can confirm what you did, how is that bragging? Again, it's not. If I say I wrote six right? books, how is yeah. that bragging? Yeah, because you can, you can I think the way, the way, the way yeah. we've always been taught and programmed yeah. is that you're not supposed to big yourself up. We're always supposed to. I think the system has always been set up to keep us in a lack mindset. So if we continue to downplay ourselves or if we continue to give our attention over here, you know, and over there, like like the like the doctor said, trying to do 50 different things at once. And we're not focused on, you know, what we're really good at and what our calling really is. Isn't then, it even biblical? I am that I am. Exactly. Ab absolutely. And then also when you find that the universe responds to man, highness, know thyself. The yeah. universe responds to highness. It can see you when your antennas are up. And this is not, I mean, I love that Kofi uh demonstrates who he is in his humility, like as a person. Kofi's a good dude. Like Kofi's a good dude. But at the same time, you know, it just in case if you don't pop it, doesn't mean you're not gonna be blessed. But it's just really good to operate in a in a space of highness. Like my essence is high, my energy is high. I understand how things work, and that's Absolutely. really all you're demonstrating when you're popping your shit. Is that's that it right how there? All things work in the universe, and if when you're in that space, then you feel comfortable saying, "Yeah, this is what I did. <laughs> this is what I accomplished. This is what's coming into me. This is how I'm giving it back out to the universe and the community. It's all cyclical, but." When you hold on to it because you're afraid of, you know, making somebody feel a certain way. Because here's the thing, that fear is in our mind. Who knows who can get inspiration off of you saying Kofi with his laundry list of accomplishments. Somebody else may be sitting there that we think may think, oh, they may think I'm bragging. But really, they thinking, man, this is cool. Like, I'm sitting next to Kofi, the Red Power Ranger. Like, they may really get affirmation 
instead of the opposite. And again, that's that, there's that's just the progressive mindset that we're coming into. So I appreciate and it. You, you know what? And the way I look at it too, if somebody does get offended, that's their problem. You got something going on in your mind that you need to work out personally, though. It's got nothing to do with me, right? But, but that's exactly it, was what she said. You never know who's listening and who's watching and who you may be inspiring, you know, to, to go try their shit out. You know, so it's uh we, we have to get more comfortable with ourselves, right? And we have to get more comfortable knowing that we're great. We are Period. all great, right? And, and we should not be ashamed of that. But yeah, we are great. Ah! There you go. Because I, I started out this segment like, yo, how the fuck am I going to follow this up? Look at all y'all accomplishments, yo. All of y'all are so accomplished as black individuals, yo. And it's, it's super dope that y'all represent the culture the way y'all do. Um, so it's like, again, I'm being inspired just by being in the presence of y'all because you guys invited me on this show to tell me I'm dope. And I'm like, no, have y'all looked at y'all selves, yo? <laughs> like, yo, what the fuck you talk about? Like this dude that ripped off like 10 different books across every genre, even got the little kids in it, right? Like, come on, man. It's y'all super, super, super dope. And I love this experience. And uh, I really appreciate y'all for this. Got you, man. Well, I'm a die. I'm a you know just for the sake of time. Yep. Um, Sean, you can go to your next question. I I gotcha. go see. Gotcha. All right. So um, here we go. You you mentioned the AUX. Uh, for those that don't know, ACX. Doing, say it again. Now. ACX. AC. I'm sorry. ACX. For those that don't know, that's listening. Whenever you get into that audio narration world, you go and apply or you sign up, subscribe to ACX, and then you audition to get picked up to be an audio narrator. So my question was, uh, besides your wife's work, have you done other narration or other voice things, even besides books? They got so many, they got so much voice work. They got mm -hmm. TV shows, they got movies, they got commercials, they got a lot of voice things that could be done. So besides your wife's work, have you done other things or do you want Absolutely. to? Absolutely. I, I have. I, I've, okay. I've narrated a lot of authors' books, actually. It is. You know, I, I've got a lot of books out there right now. Um, like I say, from in all different kind of genres too. So my wife isn't. Mm -hmm. My wife is contemporary, right? She's mostly contemporary. She says sophisticated ratchet, and I think that's an app. I think that's an like appropriate that word. Like that word. title for what she does. Like that word. Um, but I've I've done romance. I've done street lit, um, and and this is all for all different all different type of authors, man. I don't if if the if the work is dope, it don't matter. It don't matter what it is. If I can feel it, if I feel like I can bring this project to life for you, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with it. I've done erotica. Um, get your brag on. Get your yeah, brag man. on. I've I've done get, I've get, done get, a get lot of brag. things for it. and and you can go out on on um you can either go to Audible. All um, my works out there on Audible. You can look at you know a lot of the different titles I've done. Some of them aren't there because the projects are. Uh, recently finished, just getting approved, final approval for stuff, or you know, authors haven't put it up yet because they're trying to get their stuff together to promote all that other stuff. But um, yeah, I'm working on one right now for another author, super super dope author, um, friend of ours. She's uh, I, I can't, I don't, don't want to say her name, and I don't want to mention the project because it's you know we kind of still in the, uh, the the project phase of it, but. Um, this one's going to be super dope. I got a, a co-narrator with me. She's super, super dope. I, I love her style. Um, knew her like myself, far as um, may not be highly known, but she is super, super dope. I think everybody's going to enjoy this one. Um, but if you want to, if you're curious about kind of the a lot of the stuff I've done going out to Amazon or Audible, um, you can hit up my socials. Cause I, all that'll take you to a link tree and all that. So yeah, I mean, I, I've done a what, probably over twenty books so far. I've got about over twenty books in the in the category right now. See you that? Know? And that's why we need the brag. That's why we need to say what we're doing and affirm. I was I would have never known that. So yeah, man. man. That they, they it. Actually, I, I had done probably six or seven projects before I even started narrating for her. Like so, the Eminem Chronicles was I had done books way before that. 
I was just at a point where I could fit her in or she made me fit her in at that point. It was like, okay, I can't, I got to do this for her. And uh, so I did that one. And then Dark Side of Light as well, uh, a little while after that. And nope, there's another one in between it, the last letter. So I've done, I've only done three projects for her, I believe. Um, but they've all been super dope, and we all know how she she gets out there. She promotes. She's she's yeah, a, she she's she is a different animal with that kind of stuff, man. Like she's yeah, she known does. all over the place. I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you shine on that. Just um, oh, actually, that um that dark side of light, the dark side of light is up for uh audio book of the year yeah the I, gem I, awards I, this year yeah i saw i saw that yeah. i saw um, your wife's name i saw i saw your name you in there as well as this uh uh sipped and read they got yeah, I, think I might be up for, I, I might be up for narrator of the year yeah you you are you are you are Let's okay I, I went on there the other day um actually friday and voted um, for all y'all, um, I appreciate um, Friday, that. You know, I did that Friday, I'm, and I'm definitely gonna be out there. Um, um, uh, you coming to? Uh, you coming? You coming to New Orleans? I'm I'm nowhere from New Orleans, man. I'm an hour and fifty seven minutes from New Orleans. Oh, we'll be in me and Shauna be in New Orleans this weekend. This uh, weekend, baby, ball with the company. Yeah, we'll be up there this ball weekend. Ball with the company. We in the building, baby. That's what's up. We'll we'll definitely be there. Yeah. I think we're we're hosting the red carpet again this year. I'm buying and, my ticket um, today. When is, when is I think we're presenting a few awards too, like we did last year. I don't know the exact date. Let me get Hold back on, to you on that. I get it for him because I'm buying my ticket today. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. It's all good. Um, I think it's in June though. Okay. Or, or the last yeah. week in May, last weekend in May, or the first weekend in June, somewhere around there. That okay. that much I do know, I believe. Right, right before Essence Fest. Essence like about July, August. Yeah, Essence, Essence is July. It's always like July fourth. Yeah, May thirty first to the third. Yeah, I think it's it's early on in uh, June or the last weekend. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to come May. out there. But yeah, it's super did. dope, super dope. We was there. Up oh, there, she go. May thirty first through June third. The Louisiana Book Festival is in March, and uh, I'm definitely gonna try to be. Hundreds of authors gonna be out there. I'm trying to be out there for that. Like this year. I told Kobe and Dr. Wade that we're trying to hit the road this year, man. We're trying to get out and about. That's a good one to go to. As they say, man. It's, that's that's, it's, a, that's it's, a good it's, time, it's, man. To touch people and be around people at the online thing is cool, but to be in somebody's physical presence and make physical connections, that's even more important. Yeah. Than the it's a media different stuff, experience, man. man. And, and to have so much of us there. We're trying to travel more, man. Having a good time, man. I, that yeah. was a really dope experience, man. Um, and shout out to Karen Renee for putting that together. Shout out. Um, and doing it again this year. So definitely. So we'll be in the house for that for sure. Ho and hopefully, you know, we can walk away with some hardware, you know what I mean? But man, you, you got know. that. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. You got that, bro. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, we gonna talk that into yeah. the yeah. universe. Yeah, we're gonna do that right now. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, congratulations and all congratulations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm definitely gonna be in the building. But uh, go ahead, sis. Uh, it's on you. Okay, cool. I was I was waiting on the on the red green light. So, <laughs> oh, you <laughs> good? Yeah, I, I, my last question is, you know, I understand that you have to maneuver in and out of different characters. My question is, how do you do? You have to psychologically prepare for that mentally, like to be, you know, a female character or be the range of characters that you uh, that you narrate. Most of the time not really there, there is some prep that goes into it once I, I i'll get the manuscript and i'll i'll read through it so that i can get familiar with the characters first and while i'm reading there i'm my mind's working already like what kind of person is this so i'm, I'm putting together what i feel like the personality is based on you know the words being used the context you know the different scenes you know so i can kind of get a feel whether this person is you know more reserved or if they're outgoing if they're loud, you know, if they're more soft spoken, um, if they a street nigga, right? Okay. Like, so all these different things come into play, and, I, and my mind's working on that as I'm reading through the manuscript. Um, but when I get ready to go into the booth, most of yeah. the time I've, I've already have what I want to do down okay. for the most part. But like I said, except for the dark side of light, I really did have to prepare myself mentally for that. That was just, a, it's just a different animal. Um, okay. than I was used to. 
So um, doing doing the female parts really don't bother me. Um, at first, it really if, at first it kind of did because I wasn't sure. I ain't wanted to sound whack, you know what I mean? Like, cause I'm a dude, I'm a I'm a whole nigga, like, <laughs> right? But you know, you figure out ways to you just kind of dial back, nigga. soften your voice a little bit. <laughs> not, a, not a whole, not a whole nigga. No, nah, I'm a <laughs> whole nigga. Bro. <laughs> nah, we no, nah, I'm a whole one over here. He always just gonna pop in for that anyway. Yeah, get out of here. But so um it, it used to kind of bother me because I, I was unsure of myself, gotcha. right? And how it was gonna come across and how I would sound. Um, but again, once once I got confirmation that yo, that's it's good. It's it's that's what we're looking for. It wasn't too much, I see and it wasn't too less. You kind of get into a comfort zone of what you can do with different types of voices like that. Um, I, I, I don't have a wide range of women's voices at all, you know, but I do have about two or three that I can pull out when I need to. Okay. Um, that's neat. That's neat. And I yeah. like that you, you know, figure out the personality of the character. I like that. That's neat. That's dope. Yeah. I, I just think that's part of the prep phase. I, I have to know, and I, I can't bring this character to life if I don't know this character. So like I said, a, a lot of, you know, I, I just... I can come up with different type of characters sometimes by just going out, going to the grocery store. I'm taking a walk and you see somebody and be like, I bet you this mug talk like this or, you know what I mean? So I find myself doing that now. Um, I kind of never really used to do that. I'm like, I ain't paying attention to nobody, but I I really got into people watching because I noticed that a lot of the characters that, that I'm, I'm called to bring to life. I've, like I say, I've either, either experienced it myself, or I know somebody who's been through that, uh, those situations and, and those type of characters. So I, I really draw from a lot of my own experience, just life experience. Um, but I do find myself watching people more and doing that and like, yo, and, and putting voices that, to them. Like, man, I bet you this mug talk like this. Just, you know, just kind of having fun. But that keeps me sharp as well. It keeps I me in practice. So it's uh, just one of those things where I'm I'm trying to live it. I dig, more I dig. so my whole life and not just in the booth you know I, wanna... I dig i dig uh, this uh last question and then um we'll go into the woman segment um my question is um okay with narration for some like my brother my brother sean and i'm calling my brother because he's my brother mm-hmm. everybody's on this panel my brother even uh dr wade she's my sister right we we really family and um my brother um he's wanting to uh, get into the narrator space, right? Um, what is some of the technology or equipment or efficient equipment is needed in order to be uh to get the quality sound for narration? Like, what 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 are that? What what are some of those things? Um, for far as uh, Sean goes, far as our brother goes, he's probably already got everything he gonna need. Um. What would you of course you'll need a microphone? You'll is need it any type of microphone, or is a certain type of microphone that man, you have to have? I'm a, I'm gonna be real with y'all. If if for somebody who's on the ground floor starting and thinking about it, any type of microphone right now would do, right? It, it doesn't have to be expensive whatsoever, right? We can we can make this as, as least expensive or cheap as we want, or we can go as expensive as we want, right? So if it to really get quality sound, you can use damn near any microphone. I, I can plug in. I've got about three different other microphones that I was using before I, I started using this one. And this is not a top of the line mic by any means either. It's a popular microphone, but it's not top of the line, bro. Like you can go thousands of dollars for microphones and nobody's doing all that. Um, the, the microphones I was using before this one is less than a hundred bucks, right? So. They're on the lower end, but they sound good as well, right? It's, it's just a matter of grabbing that baby, plugging it in, and doing some checks on yourself, right? So you need that. You'll need a computer with a DAW or a digital uh, audio workstation, something, and that's basically something to record it. Um, plenty of free ones out there. Um, Audacity is a free version. Um, it's a free version DAW. And that's very, very popular. Like, I don't know a person who's gotten in front of a microphone at home that didn't have audacity. 
at some point yeah. in their career. So, um, there's a, and if you're a Mac user, you got GarageBand. Same thing, right? It's free. It comes with the, uh, it comes with the Mac, right? So <coughs> it's not a whole lot of money there, right? So we're talking about a microphone so far and a computer. Um, the what if you got some money to put into it? The most important thing is space treatment. That's where you want to focus, especially as a beginner on the microphone, because you don't you, you may not know a whole lot about mic placement and all this other stuff and how to speak into it until you get used to doing it. The most important thing is sound treatment, right? So room space treatment. You know, you want to get something that's going to block the walls. You don't want a bunch of hard walls around you. You want to get some treatments and, and it's. You can go, you got some of these, some pretty inexpensive stuff you can do in, in a space. There's a lot of people who started out um, in voice acting, some real popular, famous people. It started out in a closet, bro. Yeah, like, I saw a lot of that. Closet is that. a great space to start recording because you got the clothes in there yeah, it's, it's blocking the wall. So it's a, you, the idea is that you don't want your voice bouncing off the walls because that creates reverb. Right. And so it, your voice sounds weird and then it get real thin. So that's that's probably the most important thing you need to know and look up and read about is the, room treatment. Who's the, who's the main advice on like mixing and master? That my main, main question was about that. When it comes to audio narration, my main thing was I'm not experienced in the booth as far as technology side. Mm -hmm. right? So like mixing and mastering was my main like I was <laughs> That's the only thing about it. I feel confident in my voice. I feel confident in my ability. I didn't I didn't know how to do none of that. I didn't know how to do none of that, bro. You know how I learn? YouTube. So so you're you got mastering? thousands. You got huh? <clears throat> so you mastering um like I this here is a setup too for a studio. Yeah. <clears throat> and I done had a studio uh, in the past, and and I got four speakers in here now. I got um some regular speakers, studio speakers here and over here in this wall over here. And then I got four atop me. All these are mixing speakers. So I can mix. I'm talking about real, real good. But when it comes to mastering, um, I, I've, 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 I attempt it. But a lot of times, you know, um, most of the people I talk to, they tell you have to go to school. We got a guy here um that went to full cell that was another place that i was gonna go go to full cell but i i don't have i really don't have the time to try to take on going to school um at full cell for a year and a half and they provide you with a macbook they provide you with uh um pro tools like i got pro tools i mm -hmm. use pro tools and i use studio one um okay, yeah so <clears throat> um um so those are two studio one and pro tools or another another place where you can actually learn how to mix down but yep. and, they, and they have they have uh free versions of those too there's a free version of those and then there's a paid version of those i i use uh myself i use audacity not audacity yeah. but um uh audition adobe adobe audition, adobe um, audition. now to do when you i think it's a, it's a whole different ball game when you're talking about mastering music and then mastering a vocal like mm -hmm. far as like what we're doing right now spoken word it's it's completely different. Like the mastering is not what you think it is. Like if uh, you say, Sean, like what you're trying to do is get into, you want to narrate, get into narration. Yes, sir. That that mastering process is not anywhere near as complicated. Now, as now, stringent as music, yo. Right. But, now that you say that, you 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 absolutely correct. You you're absolutely correct because now you're not dealing with certain files like when i'm mixing music yeah. down i separate the music file i might snap separate the snare the tweeter the hi-hat the bass line um uh and other different instruments that i have in there <clears throat> when mixing but it's kind of the same process when you're doing that but they split them put them in ways they do all types of stuff with it when it comes to the mastering but like you saying you only doing vocals so it's yeah you're, you're doing that. spoken words so it's like right. a whole yeah. it's it's really easy it's not a complicated thing at all i mean so don't don't let that kind of deter you or, or or shy be shy about trying to get involved in it like okay 
it's uh like I, it's the mastering for that is you've got you've got certain things you need to know and learn like you've got you know you got to know about compression you got to know about um eqing mm -hmm. right you got to you know there's there's certain things that you do need that are the same mm -hmm. but the process and using those is completely it's completely different from music from doing a musical production to a spoken word production again because yeah. it's really only your voice that you have to worry about Thanks. Um, yep. So they use those tools and they got they got really easy tools to use. So you've got plugins that go with pretty much any DAW out there um, that you can just get. They got free ones. They got some you can buy, you know, as far as EQs, you know, compressors and all these other things, the yesers, you know, the noisers and all this other stuff. It sounds complicated, but once you actually get into it, mm -hmm. it's not that complicated, bro. Uh -huh. and, okay. and some of these things are so automated, like, you know, the the, the way to do it, like for me, could, because I'm doing it all the time, is to have a system where you can streamline this stuff, right? So I've got something I can, I got a package that I can just lay over my voice, and that's all of it right there. And if I need to go in and tweak something because I don't like the way it sounds, I'll go in and tweak it. But Yeah, they got um, a program right now. It's escaping my mind right now. <clears throat> I only used it one time. But it's a mastering tool that you can use that does all that with the EQ, the compression. But I've you have, but you have to pay for it. I I paid a hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollars. It's not free, but it's it's worth mm -hmm. it. It's a hundred dollars. And I took a track that I did and used it. I only use it. I used it last year, and um and compared it with my regular mix that I did and with what they did, bro. And it's bro. And when I yeah. tell you. And I ain't really have to do them, but if you want to go in and tweak it, it also it also will let you go in mm -hmm. and if you want to tweak certain things that you don't don't like, or uh, you know you you could go in and definitely do that. But um, I, I've I, got a couple of programs like that that mm -hmm. uh, I mean it, it it does the EQ mm -hmm. and, and it'll do the exciter. Mm -hmm. I mean it'll do all this other stuff to you. It's the, and it just you just sit there and you drop it on the file and it reads the file. It listens to it. And it'll show you what it's doing. And, it, and by the time it's done, man, that thing comes out, you sound like, man, listen. I mean, I mean, man, I sound like Billy D. Williams in this oh, world. Like, man, like, man, but <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Um, but the thing is though, for most spoken yeah. word, you you know, you don't have to do a whole lot to it, right? Because you want a more natural sound. Yes, you do. You're not you're not trying to change the sound, you're just trying to Make sweeten it, it up and, and clean it up yeah yeah you're just trying to clean it up yeah. and make it a little sweeter yeah um so it's, it's really not a tough process if you want to get online at some point and we can we can do some stuff man we can do that man yeah. and, we're gonna we're gonna, we gonna rap yeah. me and you we're gonna rap sure you keep telling me that man you, but you're busy man you got to get some time man no no we're gonna we're gonna, we gonna make time i, I want to get into the game for i've been saying it for a long time i think Let's this do is it. the year to do it this all right year to do it yeah, for sure. Anytime you're ready, man, we can do it. I got you, Kenny. All right. Well, you know, we uh, appreciate it. We got one more second. Is the women's the segment. The uh, women's yeah, segment. We're going to say the best, best for last. For sure. yeah. last. So let's this get into the late. women's late segment night. with uh, Griotis, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Ashley Wade. I'm sure they're tired of listening to me anyway. I'm sorry. Go <laughs> ahead, Queen. What up, good people? So listen, today... We, I'm first of all, I'm grateful to be able to bring this uh, type of information to you. But today, we're honoring we're honoring the woman, the powerhouse, anthropologist, author, and the queen of the Harlem Renaissance, Zora Neale Hurston. Had got to give the sister some love. Got to give the sister some love. She is known and celebrated for her outstanding ability to connect with her people. Um, I think a lot of us, even today, Kofi called out earlier, we'd be in these griot roles and don't know it, but. I love the way that she connected with the people. She went into certain communities straight up, face to face, um, to immerse herself in the in the culture in order to uh, preserve it, to note it and preserve it in her work. Um, the two books that I've read of hers are called Their Eyes Were Watching God, classic, and then Barracoon. I don't know if you guys have tapped into that yet, but it's fantastic. Um, but the duality is to be able to see her at her talent as an artist as a person and as a collector, because those are two different types of books. Um, 
she literally captured the lifetime of Kujo in Barakun, and he's part of the last cargo. And she was able to document the history of Africa Town. I had no idea Africa Town even existed until I read that book, um, Barakun. And so now I think there's a documentary called The Descendants or Descendants on Netflix, which on goes. Netflix. You check it out. Yeah. Fire, Netflix. fire, fire. And it's beautiful to know that that is based on the work that she did. So has she not been able to capture his story and capture the last cargo, we wouldn't have known, A, that there was a whole town that was settled by Africans when they came over here um, and they were emancipated. But anyway, that place is at that place in Africa town is in Alabama to this day. So it's living, living history. And uh, the reason why Zora is important, you know, I recently had an interview with Ray Chesney, shout out to the homegirl Ray Chesney, the Zora girl. And I learned from her that not only was Zora this person that we get from her work, but she was also a diva. She was super confident, super savvy, and she commanded the respect in her presentation and in her work. So she wasn't a person who was just like, take what I can get. She was a person who walked into a room and she de demanded uh, respect because she was an anthropologist, because she knew that she was carrying the legacy of the people. Um, and I remember asking Ray, I was like, dang, did she know that we needed this? Because without those people like Zora to capture the folklore, we wouldn't even really know the depths and the beauty of our culture. You know what I'm saying? We would have just been stuck in, oh, we were slaves and now we're here. But now we know that, you know, our culture was beautiful even back in the 20s and the late 1800s, our culture was beautiful. And I appreciate Zora for that. Plus, you know, I had to put a little razzle on it. Zora was real fly with it. You know, Zora came in with her hats on and, you know what I'm saying, she came through in her dresses. And I love that about what she represented then because now, you know, we don't even know how to be okay in our bodies in 2024. You know what I'm saying? We got BBLs, we got, you know, all this other stuff. But back then, Zora was fly in the 20s. So just to put that into perspective as a Black woman. Um, but her work was a tool in response to this question, who are Black people? Once we mm. got emancipated and we were seen as something more than slaves, people... Oh, no. The show was tweaking while ago. She was moving around. So hopefully she'll come back, man, um, real quick to finish up about... <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I was on Do Not Disturb. I have no idea how that call came through. My bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, because I'm yeah, too hot. Do not Lord, spirit done came through and knocked yeah. it off. <laughs> but, but her work was a tool for that response. I didn't know that. You know, because we read these books and we research these people, but we have no idea that what, you know, what was really going on. And then we found out that, you know, things with the uh, Harlem Renaissance were super political. You know, some people got in rooms because of their connections and some people were excluded from rooms because of the connections that they did not have. And plus, Zora as a human went through a lot. And I think that it's beautiful. Her story is beautiful that even as she, you know, she passed away in the 60s, her legacy is still strong. We still have Zora festivals all across the country. Um, people celebrate her work still to this day. Her work back then is still inspiring our writers. If you look at the work of Jasmine Ward, you know, you can see that Zora had a piece into her inspiration. And a lot of our new authors and their, their creativity and the way that they write and engage the reader came from Zora. So I want to give my love, a special shout out to yeah, Zora no person. And make sure y'all follow uh, Ray Chesney, the Zora girl on Instagram, uh -huh. because she she brings us the humanity mm -hmm. part of the legend, which is Zora Neale Hurston. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Coffee, for that. Yeah, shout out to Zora, man. I mean, because I, that's, like I said, I, I've been an avid reader for 10 or 11 oh. years. And I, I, you know, Sean put me on Zora. This, this was the first book I ever read. I never, and I prone it's myself that book on, is really so beautiful. Right, on information, right? And I'm like, how do I get past this lady? How did I get past this phenomenal writer, right? This phenomenal anthropo uh, anthropology, this phenomenal lady in totality, right? Um, so I just I just got I just I'll be honest, like I said, I just I got privy to her last year, you know, and I just got this book uh 
Barracoon. I have yes. Barracoon. I hadn't read this book yet, but um, and it's in it, and I'm I can breeze through this because it's 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 not a big read at all. Tell them, tell them why we going to New Orleans on Saturday. Tell them why we gonna be at Ball in the Company. Tell them what that's about. Yeah, we we got uh. We're going to see Ibram X. Kende. Ah, Dr. Kende. Dr. Kende. Yes, yes. Okay. You know, and he has a new book. Uh, the young adult Bar- version. The young yes. adult version the of Barracoon, right? So, so we're we're going down there to support him and uh, hopefully get an autographed copy of his new book, which is right. will be released Tuesday, the Tuesday. 23rd. 23rd okay. is uh, the pub, date pub. that his book just gets. Yeah, his pub date is the 23rd. Pub. He'll be in New Orleans from three to five o'clock at the Bowman Company. Y'all gonna be um, blessed. Y'all gonna be blessed. Yes, but even but that's, that's not mad though. Zora, Zora was uh, you know, she was alive in the late eighteen hundreds. You know, she was working in the early nineteen twenties. And even now in twenty twenty four, Doctor Kendi, <laughs> the the scholar, has doubled back and said, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and you know bring it back to life. Bring it back to life. Somebody said a friend who was one of their ancestors on the Clotilda. Yeah, so that was the actual last slave ship. It should have never happened because slavery was yeah. abolished. Slavery was abolished. It was actually illegal that last that last cargo. But a Joe, you know, and he had a hard life. But the fact yeah. that she went down there, he would talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Because it take you can't just roll up on nobody and be like, "Tell me your story." Because some people be like, "Who are you and why?" So that tells me a lot about Zora that she ex- he accepted her. She would bring him like watermelons and watermelons, different fruits. Yeah. And- they broke bread together, and that speaks volumes to her character. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I wanted to honor her because our black women, you know, the character that she displayed, we just we can display that today. So I want that her story and her legacy to be an inspiration for other black women to be you, be you, get out there in the community, let people see you working, let people see your personality, oh, and whatever you draw in as far as work, that's what you draw in. But she was a community woman, and so we shout we shout out Zora for her and her legacy. Before we leave, Kofi, I'm gonna tell you why you didn't know about it after all that reading. I'm gonna tell you why it got past you, right? Because in this space in particular, a lot of us pride ourselves on being so much scholarly, and we're reading all of the top scholars and all of this nonfiction. We pride ourselves on our library, but we don't value fiction enough. I can raise my hand for that category as well for a long time. We don't value the power in these stories because it's fiction. We gotta still draw so many life lessons from fictional writing, as A. A. Lewis is doing, and her husband D. Lewis. And you can draw so many life things to apply to your life from fictional stories, man. Our ancestors <laughs> always, we, we always had mythos and, and tall tales and fables. We always had fictional allegory, right? So we got we gotta tap into that. Yeah, and my fellow Griot T, because again, without her stories. She was when people were like, okay, well, who are black people? They went to Zora's work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she stood morning. up and she spoke for us when we didn't even know we needed to be spoken for. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There it is, man. That's um, well, I'll be um, damn. There go episode one. We're gonna have to bring your wife on, man. She was trying to jump on here. She was and, trying um, to jump on. She was trying. I guess she was trying that's to. That's how they get her on show, man. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's we, why you trying to stay time, man, all the time. But we go, we go, definitely bring her on. I will ask her what an email. She never did respond back. She's so, but stupid, we we dope. definitely going to bring. We gonna definitely bring her on though, because I want dope, to pick up brain. Yeah, I have dope. a lot of fun with her. And she's a griot, right? You know what I'm saying. So yeah, tell is. her to embrace. She's a modern day griot. Very so prolific. prolific. Yes, yes, yes. So there you have it, man. Um, she's we way more new. interesting than me. Yeah. No man, we this was a we enjoyed you. I definitely <laughs> yes, we enjoyed and I learned a lot. This right. was mad dope. I, yeah. I love we'll this man. And I learned a lot, bro. I definitely learned a lot. You're right. I'm gonna stop doing that. You're stop doing that. You're right, so I'm gonna stop because doing look, that, I'm the, I'm a anti. I don't really fool with audio, and I'm gonna go download what I need to download so I can tap into your character. Yo, hit me up. But let me know how you liked it though? Okay, I'm definitely gonna. Do it. You go. Definitely. I don't. You you know probably. Do let me know you, how you like it. Yeah, she definitely gonna like, it. and I and it, like I'm saying, you, once you give it a chance, like Dr. Wade, I would just like you. I'll be honest, like I said, in the past 10, 11 years, I probably did three audio books, two of them I never finished, but I'm like ten in, and it just helps me now with my process. I can listen to an audio, and then boom, go back and read the book and annotate. But you know, also 
you can annotate an audio book, Dr. Way. That's what's audible. Telling me. Audible. Yes. You can you audible. Can, in audible, you can annotate. So I annotate while I'm listening to the audio, hey. and then I go back and annotate. Dr. Way, I'm at the top light, light. At the top light. <laughs> But the cool part is I'm now I know D. Lewis, so now I'm gonna go research his work. Right, and now right. I can tap in something because we like that personal connection. So now since I know him, well, yes, I'm about to go I'm tap get in. out of here for the listeners real quick, like ten seconds or less. So when you first first do it, like anything else, it's gonna be awkward. You're gonna feel like ah, I don't know. You gotta. It's like another muscle. You gotta use that muscle. But as you're doing it, like Kofi said, you're gonna find a rhythm. You're gonna find a groove, and then you're gonna start. And what I like these days about narration versus the old days. So many more authors are reading their own work. I so for me, yeah. I most time want to know you reading the book. Yes. Yep. I love enough people read their own work. You know how I put that spice on certain things, certain emphasis. Yep. You know what you meant when you wrote it. Yeah. And in the old days of audio, you probably had some other people True. reading uh, 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 Malcolm X. I see. I see. It, I see. It, it, your, your brain is not matching, like, bro. But whenever I heard Lawrence, X. whenever Lawrence Fishburne did Malcolm X, it became a whole different story. I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne, Malcolm X, one of the greatest narration. Man, D. Lewis, check that out. Lawrence Fishburne, Malcolm X. Check it out. I'm definitely going to check it out. because yeah, Lawrence is my dude. I've, 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 I've always liked him. As his an actor. I, I know a lot of them cats his are starting to, to do more audio books, too. But I can imagine how Lawrence Fishburne would, would do a Malcolm X. I had read Malcolm X like five times in my life. Mm -hmm. When I heard him do it, it became a whole different story. It was hearing them do Malcolm X. I'm definitely gonna get that one. We're gonna we're gonna chop that, it that, up. That's no smoke, man. No lie. I gotta get out of here for real, for real. I'm gonna run. But I love y'all, man. Season two. Hey. I hey. thank y'all very much, brother. I'm gonna get out of here too. And if for anybody that wanna get a thank hold of you, D, D. Lewis, all this information is down in the description. Dr. Wade's um website, if you wanna patronize her business for any type of modules. Um, or even purchase her book or some of her merch, you can go to her website. It's also down in the description. If you're looking to get a book published, uh, my website is also down in there. You can hit me up through the website. You can hit me up on my business line, or you can hit me up on my personal um, email if you're trying to get a uh, book published. Um, and man, we what, for anybody else, D. Lewis, man, just give out all your handles. I got your handles in the description, but give them out live too as well. You, you testing me now. I should have wrote this shit down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you silly. Um, no, it's uh, D. Lewis, the narrator. Um, that's pretty much that's pretty much it, man. I try to keep that shit simple. D. Lewis, the narrator. You can find me on on Facebook um instagram and as as tiktok as well um and all that it's at or some underscore shit y'all know what it is i listen but it's d lewis the narrator and you'll be able to find me man on all those platforms um pretty much anywhere but uh twitter gotcha. uh, nah. well uh, no nah, no nah, i ain't on no twitter <laughs> all right well there you have it man let's give it up for d lewis one more time Thanks, uh, I really appreciate y'all, man. Yes, this man. is really dope. I, I really appreciate y'all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and we out of here. We're gonna leave y'all one more time with the the new Griot uh, podcast theme song, man. And we out of here. That's fire. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's, it's, a it's lot. real smooth. It's got to I like that. Shout out to the Red Ranger. Kofi, peace, Shade.